friends, uh, welcome to episode 6 of Wool and Word. My name is Susie. You can find me on Instagram under the username tidnit, like tidbit but with knit. I am a knitter and seminarian living in Toronto, Ontario, and this is a knitting and theology podcast. As always, I'm going to put timestamps of everything down below in the description box, so um, you can just check out whichever parts of the podcast you want to check out. Um, before I dive into the content today, um, I just wanted to give a quick update about what's going on in my life, um, mostly so you, uh, so I can make an excuse as to why this podcast will probably be shorter than other episodes. Um, last week was sort of the first week of term. It was orientation week. Um, I knew exactly how much time would go into it for me. Um, but I didn't expect it to take quite as much energy as it took out of me. I think um, it was also because of my part-time job. Um, I was doing uh, a couple more shifts than I normally do. Um, and uh, I work at Starbucks. Uh, and I decided to do um, early morning shifts this term because I thought that would sort of help me maximize my time. But that means... Um, my shift start at 5.15 or 5.30, um, which means I like to get up at like 3.30 because I can't function without having a pot of coffee and some breakfast. So, and I don't like to hurry in the morning, so I just get up at that very ungodly hour and sort of try to relax a little bit before going into work. But that means, you know, that I've gotten up at 3.30, <laughs> which means that I'm pretty tired for the rest of the day. Even if I go to bed the night before at like 8, which I try to do and I'm often successful at doing, it's still um, just not great for the body, I guess, to disrupt its usual cycles. Um, so I've been very tired, I haven't had a lot of time, um, so there isn't a lot of knitting to show you. <laughs> And I haven't read a single thing all week, so um, there isn't a lot of theology content either. <laughs> but I do have some things to say, uh, so just stick around, um, stick with me. Um, there's some content, so you're not here for nothing. I actually thought I would skip recording this week, but I happen to have some time before uh, my first class starts today in the afternoon, so I thought might as well do it. This is fun. It's good for me to do a fun thing that I enjoy doing. So here we are. Uh, yeah, okay, let's um, go to the knitting content now. So uh, I'm wearing um, two things that you've already seen before. Um, the first thing I'm wearing you can't see and you actually haven't really seen before <laughs> because it's my framework bralette. Um, I want it to be comfy for my first class, so I'm wearing my framework bralette. Um, it's a design by Jesse Maid. Um, and I knit it up in Farmer's Daughter Fibers, um, Craggy Tweed, which is a DK weight, um, in their colorway, uh, Flight of Crane, and it's done up in, uh, 3.5 millimeter needles? Yeah, 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, I'll pop a picture right here, uh, so you can see, but, try see, you can see, you can see my eye cord. I'm wearing the bralette, you can see it. <laughs> the other thing I'm wearing is my uh, favorite thing ever these days, my Vertices Unite by Stephen West. Um, yeah, I finished it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I talked about it at length many times here on the podcast, um, but just quickly, uh, I used five hand-dyed yarns because I like to spoil myself like that. <laughs> um, one, of the, the, uh, one of the yarns is Hedgehog Fibers. It was from the Moody Fade Club that I signed up for, for June, July, and August. Um, the second one was a uh, Canadian dyed yarn um, by Riverside Studios. Cat dyes these yarns. Um, it was her merino nylon sock base in the colorway graphite. Um, second, third yarn I used was Fiber for the People, um, Taylor from uh, Nevada dyes these yarns, um, and that's the one I did this beautiful I-cord edging with. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. It's kind of flippity-floppity. There you go. So that's the graphite and the fiber for the people titanium together. I made a cheesy little Instagram post about these colorways, if you want to go check that out on my Instagram. <laughs> um, 
And then I also had another Canadian dyer, Lycan and Lace, um, her 80-20 sock base in the Pressed Flowers colorway, and another Irish yarn, Olan Mills, um, in the Utopia colorway, and that's the sort of big block you can see here. It's so beautiful. Um, so that's my Vertices Unite. I wear it pretty much all the time now because in Toronto it got um, really cold really suddenly. Um, so I just like throw it on and I feel super awesome. <laughs> okay, on to finished objects. Um, I don't think... <laughs> so this isn't really a finished object because it's not really an object, but it is finished. Um, okay, let me just show you so I can explain. It's a swatch that I've cut. <laughs> so this used to be in the round. Um, I knit it up in the round. It was sort of like this before. I haven't woven in the ends, obviously, because this is just a practice swatch. Why would I weave in the ends? But so I knit it in the round, and then on this side I did a crochet stick reinforcement. I don't know if you... yeah, crochet stick reinforcement, and then I cut it. And then on this side, I did a sewn reinforcement, and then I cut it. Um, it's really fun to cut your knitting. <laughs> um, just quickly, I guess, I just used the Cascade 220. The brown is called Van Dyke Brown, and the green is the uh, Lime Heather. Um, I had this yarn lying around for a project I had planned on doing for my brother last Christmas. <laughs> he wanted a hat with like, that would be reminiscent of avocados. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. But this is what he wanted. So these are the colors I had, but I never got around to doing it. So I am hoping to get it done for his birthday, um, which is in December. So it'll be like a birthday Christmas thing. And by then it should be hat weather. Um, but of course, when you want to steak, you want to use um, a sticky animal fiber. And um, oddly enough, this the Cascade was the only worsted weight 100% um, wool I had lying around. Uh, which, like, I mean, I, I know my stash isn't as big as other people's stashes, but I just, I always feel like I have everything I could possibly need, and I was surprised that this was the only one that I had. <laughs> but there you go. Um, so the reason I have a swatch that I cut is because um, this past weekend was Vogue Knitting Live, the virtual event this year. Um, they had a bunch of marketplace things and um, classes offering over Zoom. Um, and I took two classes, and one of the classes I took was the sticking class with Mika John, who lives in Amsterdam, and um, she designs and does stuff under um, the name Salt and Stone Knits. Um, I'll put all the info down below. She was a great teacher. She was very kind and patient, um, very kind and patient, um, and like super enthusiastic. She's adorable. Um, I really enjoyed learning from her. Um, yeah. So I, I really, I think it's a great way to get into cutting your knits to do up a swatch and then to cut it um, because it's like it just feels better than like even cutting into a sock for a true afterthought heel um, I feel like could be scary because you've already knit up the whole sock but with a swatch it's just a swatch you're trying to hack it up um, it was really fun um, yeah <laughs> um, I don't really, I, I didn't take this class because I have something in mind that I want to steak. Um, I just thought it'd be a good skill to have for future times. Um, yeah, and it's like, it's really simple. Um, I think if you don't know how to crochet, which, I, which is a category I fell under until like literally two weeks ago, the crochet reinforcement could be a little bit tricky. Um, but thankfully, I did teach myself how to crochet a couple of weeks ago, so it was easy peasy. Um, it turned out really well that way. I was really glad I um, had decided to do that. I didn't even know that it would come in useful this way. I just wanted to learn how to crochet for a variety of different reasons, um, but it turned out really well. So that was the first class I took at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, but so to show you the second class I took at Vogue Knitting Live, 
um, we're going to move into the works in progress section because um, instead of doing a swatch for this class, I just started the suggested project. And um, while we were learning how to do this, um, I was just knitting on it. So I have this work in project now. This is the Chromatic Cowl by Amy Detchen. It's brioche. Look, it's brioche. I know how to do brioche, <laughs> which um, it turns out isn't as impressive as I thought it is because brioche is really, really easy. <laughs> or Amy made it seem easy and uh, she's a great teacher, so I picked it up easily or something like that. But it's not that hard. I mean, maybe it gets a little bit complicated when you want to do the thing that I want to do for a future project, which is do like leafy designs and stuff like that because you have to do increases and all that. But I feel like if you know how to read a pattern and follow a pattern, you can pretty much figure it out. <laughs> Um, but it's so squishy. I wish you can squish it. I mean, my goodness, it's just, oh, look at that. Yeah, so I haven't made very much progress because, you know, I was like trying to pay attention and like picking up a new skill. It was a two hour class. This is all I got done in the two hour class. Um, but I feel pretty good about it. I'm excited to finish it and I think I'll actually wear it. I know last time when I talked about it, I said that the purple is like a little bit too obnoxious for me to wear, but I think um, I think it's good with the with the white too. Um, but anyway, so this obnoxious purple um, <laughs> is uh, Feisty Fibers Rock and Socks and the Thrills colorway, and then I've used the leftover I had from uh, the shawl, the Pressed Flowers by Lichen and Lace for the contrasting color. Um, and I think it works really well together because the um, pressed flowers has some purple in it, as you can see right there. So it's like a contrast, but it also sort of fits together in a wonderful way. Um, so I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles for this. Um, so for most of my projects, I use my um, look a interchangeable needle set that I got from Passion Knit, uh, I think, when they were having a sale a while back at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I haven't, like, because that was pretty recent since I got it, um, I don't have a lot of, like, extra needles, lot, like, to go with the set. So I actually only have one set of 3.5 millimeter needles, which is the same size needle I'm using for the boxy. So right now, um, I had to take the needles off the boxy and put it on this guy to do this project. Um, and I'm like wondering if I'll, I'm wondering, I don't know what I'll do. I could just get a spare set of needles and um, keep the needles on this guy and get another set of needles for the boxy and so I can work on both of them at the same time without having to switch out the needles. Or I could stop being lazy and just switch out the needles every time I want to work on the different project. Or um, I could just finish this cowl up really quick and then go back to the boxy. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do in that regard. Um, I'm leaning towards just finishing this uh, and then going back to the boxy later um, because honestly I'm a little bit tired of the <laughs> stockinette at this point. But I might change my mind because classes are starting and like I talked about last podcast, um, doing stockinette during class seems ideal. Um, sorry, my nose is really itchy today. Um, I know it's not attractive when people touch their face all the time, especially in this time of the virus, uh, but my nose is very itchy today. Uh, that was totally a tangent. Um, but now I have to scratch my nose again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. So that's my first whip, the Chromatic Cowl by Amy Detchen. And um, that was the second class I took for Vogue Knitting Live. Um, and the last class I took for Vogue Knitting Live. Um, I think it's really great what they're doing, having these virtual classes. Um, but if I can say a couple of things about the experience, um, it was a great experience. Like I would never go to a Vogue Knitting Live event in person because one, like I, believe it or not, I don't have money coming out my ears on my Starbucks salary. <laughs> and second, it's just like hard to travel um, in the fall. 
uh, so it like felt really good to be able to take part in this event um, virtually and it was super easy I was just sitting on my kitchen table and um, yeah it was super easy um, and I feel like it was really lovely to sort of quote unquote be around knitters from all over the world um, but I guess I found it a little bit um, sad I don't know if sad is the right word um, so what would happen is like these people uh, would have trouble with some of the techniques and it just seemed impossible for the teachers to like show them how to do it <laughs> like I thankfully didn't have any trouble um, but like you know sitting there while this other person who's having trouble is trying to describe what's happening and the teacher is trying to figure out what is happening from this description um, it was a little bit uh, Maybe sad is the right word. And, and, you know, Amy at one point said, I wish I could just take the knitting out of your hands and, like, show you. Um, and, you know, I totally feel her. That would have been way easier and, like, a kind of better learning experience for everybody. Um, and this makes me think about what we're going to lose um, in the classroom this year. Um, obviously, like, theology and seminary learning, you don't ever need to take something out of somebody's hands and, like, show them how to do it. It's, like, different from knitting. It's not, like, such a hands-on thing. It's more sort of wordy and stuff like that, which I guess uh, the virtual platform is um, pretty adept at doing, but um, I don't know. It seems like we've been, we've lost a lot, and, uh, um, I don't know that we've been mourning adequately. That's super cheerful. Um, and anyway, uh, this is the knitting section, not the random philosophizing and talking about stuff section. So <laughs> let's move on to my second work in progress, which I was hoping would be a finished object by now. But like I said, I've been really tired, really busy. So uh, it is not finished, but this is my second patalo sock. I finished the heel turn. Um, I'm doing the gusset right now. Here, let me show you the gusset. Can you see the gusset? Yeah, it's forming. Um, I'm almost done. And then I just have to do the foot. This is a pattern by Unit. Um, Claudia Q bought four Unit. Um, this is for my aunt and my aunt lives in Korea, and my mom is going to Korea uh, in like two weeks, a week and a half. Oh my gosh, I really gotta finish these socks, my goodness. Um, I'm gonna work on this. <laughs> I gotta finish these. Um, yeah, it's a, so there's a color work thing up top, and I gotta weave in all these ends, my gosh. Color work thing up top, and then the pattern doesn't have the leg quite so long, but I just wanted to make a long leg for my aunt. Um, and the main color I have here is Shibui Knits um, Black Plum in their pebble base, and this is Soot by Lichen and Lace again on their 8020 sock base. And I've held the pebble double um, because the pebble is quite a light fingering weight, more like a lace weight, I'd say. Well, no, not a lace weight. Very light fingering. <laughs> um, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles, and they're not done. <laughs> they're not done. Uh, I gotta finish them. I'm really hoping to finish them soon. Okay, that's all the knitting content I have. <laughs> that's all the knitting I've done. I mean, it's not quite true. I've knit on some other things, um, but. Uh, not substantial enough to show. <laughs> it's been a long week that has felt very short in terms of time available to me. Okay, um, I really have to scratch my nose a lot more <laughs> and I don't wanna do it on camera, so I'm gonna shut it off for a second and then I'll come back with the theology content. Um, like I said, I haven't read a single thing all week, <laughs> not a single word. I can't believe a whole week went by without me reading anything. It's, wow, <laughs> what kind of student am I? Not a very good one, apparently. Um, but, I mean, so the great thing about theology is that the whole point of it is 
um, for it to support the living out of theology, right? Um, it's not, I mean, a lot of people like to think it's kind of like philosophy where it's kind of a theoretical thing, but um, really the whole point of theology is to support the Christian life. And I have been living, so maybe I can pretend that that counts as having done some theology. And I haven't just been living, I've been um, doing my part for the church. As if. That's not really true. But um, what I have been doing is, uh, so school, the term started, and um, I've been a sacristan at Wycliffe for a year and a half now, um, which is just like a fancy Anglican-y word for like helper elf at chapel. I just sort of like make sure that the officiant, who's the person that's actually doing the work, has like all the prayer requests and all the page numbers for all the things that has to get done. Um, and like I light the candles and make sure the fan is on and stuff like that. Really unglamorous job, but someone needs to do it and I'm very glad to do it. Um, and one of the reasons I'm extra glad to do it this year is because um, chapel, like physical chapel, like going there in person is only open to people who live in the building. Um, so if I weren't a sacristan, because I don't live in the building, I just live across the park from the building, <laughs> I wouldn't be allowed to go to chapel in person. Um, but because I'm a sacristan and I have this uh, job I do, um, I get to go. And um, it's really a blessing. Um, and I'm having this problem where on the one hand I feel so blessed and grateful that I get to go to chapel and worship with my community in person but on the other hand I feel uh, guilty as well that I get to go when so many of my classmates don't get to go um, and you know the chaplain um, at Wycliffe Annette told me not to feel guilty <laughs> Because being told not to feel guilty definitely helps me not feel guilty. <laughs> um, but there was a moment when like both the feeling of guilt and the feeling of gratitude was super overwhelming. And this was at the Wednesday afternoon service. Um, usually the community comes together for a Eucharist on Wednesday afternoons. But um, because of issues of like, you know, distributing the bread and stuff like that with the virus and distancing. The college thought it's just safer for everybody to just do an evening prayer instead of um, a whole Eucharistic service. Um, but the great thing about the Wednesday is that we have our organist come in, um, Jack, who's also the organist at St. Martin in the Fields. Um, and I didn't realize how much I miss hearing the organ. <laughs> and it was such a weird experience for me because I didn't grow up associating church with the organ. Um, I grew up in a Korean Presbyterian church um, and, you know, I played in my youth uh, services, like, praise team band. Like, you know, I played the acoustic guitar. <laughs> And, you know, we had a drum set. Like, that church for me is like rock music kind of thing. Um, but, you know, ever since I started at Wycliffe, um, I've been going to these Wednesday Eucharists, and there's always organs playing. Um, and I did my placement at St. Matthew's Anglican in Riverdale, um, where we also have a beautiful um, organ and an organist named um, Dave King, a wonderful man. Um, side note, he just... Um, do you say published with albums? Released? He released a solo piano album called Solitude. Um, it's like kind of apropos nothing, but we're talking about him right now, so I thought I'd tell you guys. Um, I'll put a link to it um, because it's a really beautiful album. Anyway, Dave King, who just released this album, um, organist, you know, at St. Matt's doing my placement there, I heard organs at church every week, and I guess I'd gotten used to it but I didn't realize I'd gotten used to it because holy moly hearing Jack play the organ on Wednesday. 
I, it was even more moving for me than the first time I um, took the body of Christ um, since the pandemic started. Like, I know that's not <laughs> great of me to say, <laughs> um, but uh, it just like moved me emotionally in a way that the Lord's Supper didn't. <laughs> and I think it's because music is such a primal thing for us people. You know, I think it's like sort of hardwired into our brains to be moved by it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, all this to say, um, I don't really know where I land right now, like in terms of the gratitude uh, versus guilt thing. I think I'll have to juggle both for a long time to come. Um, but maybe it won't be so bad when more churches are in session. Um, because I think a lot of churches are going back to sort of socially distanced in-person worship services um, starting even yesterday. Um, so maybe, you know, people aren't missing out in the way that I think they're missing out, but I don't know. Everything's so uncertain. And um, on the one hand, I'm like really glad people get to go back in person. But on the other hand, I'm really worried about um, whether or not there will be consequences for that. Um, and, uh, I'm sort of rambling and I don't really have a thesis statement, so to speak here, but, um, a friend of mine from Wycliffe, David Ryu, uh, recently made a YouTube video on how online church isn't church. Um, I'll put a link to that down below as well. Um, I usually don't agree with David Ryu. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this instance is no exception. I think online church is church. <laughs> but he has some good points. Um, if you're interested in the stuff, you might check it out. Um, yeah, I... So the other thing I can say in terms of life update is um, I've been thinking for a long time about writing a thesis. Um, as my sort of final year summative project thing. And I have this like perverse desire to write about how online church is totally fine. <laughs> and I want to write it with um, either Joe Mangino or Ephraim Radner, um, the latter of whom believe that the internet is demonic. Um, so clearly we disagree. But so this will be fun, right? <laughs> it's fun when you disagree with Ephraim Radner. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I just sort of trailed off there because um, I don't really know what I'm saying. I don't really know what the point was. <laughs> I guess the point is, um, let's enjoy church. Yeah, um, you know, it's like a bit depressing to say this, but we don't know how long we're going to be able to go in in person. Um, and we don't, you know, who knows, right? Who knows these days what the, how things are going to play out. Um, and it's such a blessing to be in church, to hear um, praises sung to God um, in whatever way that you find moving for you. Um, so, like, let's really, you know, count it as a blessing and enjoy it. That's, that's what I'm going to try to take away from that weird ramble of mine. <laughs> let's move on to the verse of the day. Um, this is the section where I get my phone get my Bible app, and this Bible app gives me a verse of the day. And I just pull it up, um, and I read it, and I talk about it. Today's verse of the day is from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, in the King James Version, as always. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I feel like this is one of those verses that's sort of like deceptive in its appearance. It seems really obvious and straightforward to start out with. Like trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Well, duh, obviously if you're Christian, like of course you're going to do that. Um, and if you're not Christian, then, you know, the Lord doesn't exist. So <laughs> it's moot. Anyway. It seems really obvious, but 
you know, I look at this and it really, like the last line, he shall direct thy paths. Um, it's, it's, it's an urgent verse for me because, you know, I'm in my last year of seminary. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't want to get ordained. And what else do you do with a master's of divinity other than get ordained? Um, I thought I wanted to go to grad school. Um, I thought I wanted to go to grad school in the States. Um, in fact, one of my plans for the summer was to take the GREs, um, which is a standardized test you have to take to get into grad school in the States. Um, but I never got around to doing that for some reason. Probably because I don't really want to go to grad school in the States anymore. I have no idea what I'm going to do after this year is over. And it would be really great to have God direct my path and tell me exactly what to do. Um, and sort of set me on a road that will lead me to where I'm supposed to go. So, you know, feeling that way, I look at what came before it and it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I, you know what? Like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what does it mean to acknowledge God in all my ways? Like, what does that look like, practically speaking? Like, does it look any different from what I'm doing, you know? Um, praying and, like, asking for stuff, like, direction and wisdom. Um, and, you know, I, God knows I think about God all the time. <laughs> is that, is that, am I doing it right? Um, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Uh, because, like, you know, life is a, a trial. <laughs> I don't want to go too deeply into it, but I haven't been having a good old time around here recently. Um, I've been struggling a lot with some persistent problems I always have. Um, often have and um, it's hard because I feel like I'm trying to do the right thing I feel like I'm doing the stuff I'm supposed to be doing but things still go wrong um, I don't know why this reminds me of um, <laughs> um, I sprained my ankle really badly um, earlier this year in January and I was on crutches I was on crutches for about a month and then I sprained it again um, a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago, maybe. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I sprained it again, like, pretty recently. Um, and I was talking to Ephraim Radner about it, uh, Dr. Professor Ephraim Radner, um, eminent theologian. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, I think it happened because, like, um, it was weak from having been sprained in January. And he was like, no, 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 there's no reason why it happened. Just bad things happen. <laughs> There's no reason why they happen. It's like, what? <laughs> and this is your professional opinion as a theologian? And I think that is his professional opinion as a theologian. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm very all over the place today. I'm really sorry. Um, but I don't know. If you, so, okay, here, okay, here's what I'm going to say. Here's how I'm going to end this very bad rambly section. If you know what it looks like practically to acknowledge God in all my ways, please tell me. <laughs> please tell me how I can live my life differently so that I feel more directed by God in my path. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. That's it for the theology content. I don't even have any theology forecasting later on because, um, I mean, like my first class is starting in a couple of hours. Um, maybe I'll have more to talk about uh, when classes start in earnest, but right now I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> so, um, But part of how I try to survive is by daydreaming a lot about knitting. So I do have some um, knitting forecasting to do and uh, some stash enhancement. So let's move on to that. Um, found out recently that Isabel Kramer, the German um, designer is uh, doing her uh, knit along again this year uh, for the seventh year I believe. It's called Take Your Pick Cal um, and you can just pick any of her patterns um, and you have until December 15th to finish it. Um, and I've been really enjoying doing knit alongs. They're sort of, I like the kind of arbitrary deadline that it sets for me um, so I actually get things done. Um, 
So I picked the Gianluca pattern. I'll put it right over here. Um, and I got some yarn for it from my lovely local yarn shop, Yarns Untangled in Kensington Market. Um, and I got a yarn dyed by a local dyer named Emily C. Gillis. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Um, she's so lovely. Um, she comes to the local stitch night um, that Yarns Untangles hosts um, every once in a while. And she's so sweet. Um, she also volunteers for the Great Toronto Yarn Hop, and she's just a all-around great gal. And a super talented dyer. So without further ado, here are the two colors I got. Ta-da! So the top is uh, going to be my main color, and the bottom is going to be my contrast color. Um, it's the Merino Sport. Um, the top color is called Copper. I have a thing with copper themed colorways, apparently. I just really like this kind of earthy brown. And the bottom is Nimbus. Um, it's coming out a little bit more blue than it is. I mean, it's definitely a cooler gray, but it's it's more of a gray than a blue. Uh, but I think they'll look great together. Um, so I um, really want to cast this on soon. Um, but as you can see, it's not even it's not even caked up yet. Um, I have a couple of other. I feel like I should finish one sweater project before I start another sweater project. So there's one that I'm working on. Um, Hoping to get it done soon so that I can start on this. And then the other knitting daydreaming I've been doing is um, related to Stephen West. <laughs> um, he is hosting a mystery knit along, and uh, it's a shawl knit along. Um, and I don't know that I'll have time to keep up with a mystery knit along, but it just seems so much fun. Um, and like this has gotten me really into the Stephen West mood um, and I was looking earlier this morning because this morning is when all the kits came out I was looking at the kits on the Stephen and Penelope website and sort of daydreaming um, and the palettes and the colors he picked for it look really like up my alley like so a lot of the times sort of Stephen West kind of freaks me out because he's so weird. <laughs> but the colorways he put together for the kits seemed like it would make like sort of a more regular, wearable, less wacky pattern. So I've been, um, I can't really afford the kits on the Stephen and Penelope website. Um, especially because it'll be coming all the way from Amsterdam and who knows about shipping um, and who knows if it'll get here in time. So I've been looking at um, the Knitting Lofts website, um, specifically at the Walk collection. Um, their uh, Merino fingering weight. I think all the yarns that Stephen West picked are fingering weight. Um, so I've been looking at those and sort of daydreaming. I mean, obviously the Walk collection is not the cheapest yarn you can get either, um, but I don't know. Look, I'll just be straight with straight with you. I have been very depressed. Uh, <laughs> when I'm depressed, I like to buy stuff. <laughs> so that's why I've been shopping for the Walk Collection yarn, which goes for about 40 Canadian dollars a skein. Um, I don't know that I'll actually buy it, but it makes me feel a lot better to think about buying it. So uh, that's it for today. That's it for today. Um, I'm really sorry everything's been so disjointed and I'm a little bit crazy today. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making it this far. Um, hopefully by next week things will be more settled and I will be less... <sighs> hopefully. We'll see. Alright, see you next week. Bye!